Hi everybody, Dana Sunday here, one of the OBO doctors, and um, we're going to talk today about almost a foolproof system of how to wrap your reed onto the staple with a correct overlap. What does the overlap mean and why do we do it? Well, um, if we have two surfaces, let's just say a piece of paper, two pieces of paper, and we take those two pieces of paper and we try to um, push them together, um, you're not going to get as tight of a binding as if you take one of those pieces of papers and you turn it at an angle and then the second piece of paper would kind of come at the first piece of paper and push and then you would get a better sealing at the point of contact. So it's the same thing goes when we put the two blades together, we want super tight sides. So um, in order to get super tight sides, we're going to take the top blade. I'm right-handed. So if you're right-handed, the top blade is going to step to the right. And you're going to see a slight... I mean, I'm exaggerating right now just so that you can see it on the camera. But you want to really see that you're pushing this right blade over to the right. Um, and then, of course, I'm going to make it more reasonable so that it barely, the back blade barely appears. And then you want to make sure that it's the same on both sides um, so that this top blade doesn't sit inside of the back blade. And we are calling that 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 the top blade, you know, the back blade is enveloping the front blade and you don't want that. Um, so Robin has sent me uh, these little pieces of um, tubing and he's calling them grommets and we can give you a link of where to order this tubing and then you can cut them a few millimeter size. It looks like it's probably five or six millimeters and I've never used this before so I thought it would be fun to film it. Um, and uh, I would therefore go slow enough so that uh, we could teach this to you slowly. So Robin says to, sl to make sure the overlap is correct with the top blade going over to the right. And then I'm going to slip the grommet all the way down towards the ears. And then... Go ahead and check your work on both sides to make sure that that top blade on both sides is stepping to the right a little bit. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to tie this on the piece of cane onto the staple. Um, we like to angle our piece of cane at 930 and 330. So remember that the flat of the blade corresponds, the flat of the blade corresponds to the flat of the handle. And then I just think 930. And I'm, I'm using the Mac Pfeiffer shaper tip and that ties up pretty nicely at uh, between 72 and a half and 73 for me on the RDG brass staples that I just ordered. And then I like to take my pencil and I like to mark the end of the staple so it helps me not over tie that staple. And I'm going to go ahead and wrap this reed. I want to make sure that the camera is positioned so that you can see me. Come out just a little bit. I have put a lot of beeswax on my thread. I go below my mark and then I'm really going to work hard to position. Wow, I think you're right, Robin. I look at it this way and I try to really get that 930-330 look. I'm 
I think you're right. Um, it's sealing up nicely, and I'm not having to play with the overlap so much because it's already it's already done for us. I also like to kind of push it here um, at the kind of the end of the staple to make sure that the cane is going to exit the staple properly. Both of us agree that when you cross over your, with your string, that you cross over on the flat of um, the flat of the blade and not on the, the side of the reed. I call it twisted pajamas. I will check um, with my lips at the point where the cane exits the staple to make sure that the reed seals tightly and it certainly does. And then I will double check with my um, uh, ruler to make sure that it, I didn't tie over uh, 47 millimeter, which I didn't. And then I'll go ahead and finish it up. I really like this grommet idea. Robin and I have been working hard to find a foolproof system to um, teach students about this correct overlap. I've never used any kind of grommet. Um, one of the en engineer gentlemen that sh comes to the Hobo Camp, Bill Ritchie, he's made these little um, uh, things that look like eyes that seem to work pretty well also for this. Um, I think the grommet idea would be cheaper because we don't have a system to make these. Um, and you could probably, anybody can buy this plastic tubing. Um, and then you could probably slide this down, clip the um, ears off of your cane, and then it'll slide right off. Robin says that he just kind of takes his teeth and, um, and it comes right off. But I'm going to take the ears off, um, and after I take the ears off, I'm going to slide the grommet right off, and voila! Rubinsky, I think we're on to something. I'm super excited to share that with you. I'm going to go ahead and um, sand the ears off of my reed. I think it's really important. I rub my finger along the end just to make sure there's no ears left on the, the cane at all. And then, of course, I dip my cane in, in water to get the gritty sand off. But voila, I'm pretty excited about this um, grommet idea in um, insuring. It's just an insurance policy of, um, of wrapping the reed super tightly. You know, I even have professional oboists that come to me sometimes and try to get me to help figure out some of the reed leakage problems. And um, just about every time, I think it's not having really tight sides that push into one another the way we discussed. So good luck with that. And um, we will give you a link of where you can buy the some um, plastic tubing. Seems to work super duper duper well. Okay, take care. <laughs>